can't believe the messages I get about it. Well, you're gonna die from this medication. It's gonna ruin you inside. It's gonna tear your liver apart. Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm doing a video on my, my medication that I take. This is my HIV medication. It's called Triumec. I know this is probably backwards. Maybe it's not. Maybe you guys can see that. Um, so I wanted to do this video to talk about side effects because so many people ask me about side effects. And I, I do realize that um, HIV medication gets a super bad rap and a lot of people won't test for HIV for fear of the medication because they are they hear out there in the world of whatever that you know HIV is a you know the medications deadly and it's gonna make you super sick and um, I just want to try to you know deal with some of those myths because you know I'm not sick I'm not a sick person I take this and I feel absolutely fine I will tell you I do have some little side effects from it um, and I will explain what they are and I am by no means trying to um, you know be the cheerleader for HIV that you should get HIV because it's so simple you just have to take this one pill of course we don't want HIV we don't want to deal with a virus that's in our body that's attacking our immune system um, but this does keep it completely um, undetectable and you know you equals you hopefully you guys know about this undetectable equals untransmittable when you're undetectable um, I sound like a commercial you can't transmit the virus so and you know preventionaccess.org if you want more information about that so a lot of people ask me about my medication and the side effects from it before i get to that i just want to give like just some perspective because in the united states alone 75 million people are living with hypertension and hypertension is high blood pressure i actually used to be a pharmaceutical sales rep and i used to sell medication for high blood pressure and um, so I'm pretty familiar with the condition and the diseases that can come from high blood pressure. So heart disease and stroke, the risk of those go up when you have high blood pressure. And the number one killer in the US is heart disease. Actually, it's the number one killer in the world. So, um, and you know, if you look at just overall in the US, what is killing people, it's not HIV, um, it's diabetes, it's heart disease, it's it's honestly, it's accidents at work. <laughs> There's some, some really crazy things on the top 10 list. I'll read them for you here. Top 12 things that people are dying from in the US. Chronic liver disease is number 12. Number 11 is septicemia. Number 10 is suicide. Number nine is kidney disease. Number eight is the flu and pneumonia. Number seven is diabetes. Number six is Alzheimer's. Number five is stroke. Uh, number four is chronic lower respiratory diseases. Number three is accidents. And it says like unintentional injuries. Um, number two is cancer, of course, and number th one is heart disease. In the world globally, um, and again, this is just for perspective, the top 10 things that are, you know, people are dying from around the world, um, I don't have them all in total order because I know like number seven, eight, nine around there was like diarrhea, diarrhea, um, tuberculosis, diabetes. Number five is Alzheimer's. Number four is lower respiratory infections. Kind of these are repeating a bit. COPD, congestive obstructive no chronic obstructive pulmonary disease I did um, take some classes for nursing so I remember some of this stuff number two is stroke this is globally again number one is heart disease so the the thing that increases heart disease is hypertension and 75 million Americans are living with hypertension in the US you have to take medication for that um, and there's only 1 million living with HIV but for some reason hypertension medication doesn't get this bad rap that HIV medication gets they just it's just I can't believe the messages I get about it well you're gonna die from this medication it's gonna ruin you inside it's gonna tear your liver apart blah blah blah, blah. so I do know that when I was a pharmaceutical sales rep I also sold me medication for hyperlipidemia so it was for high cholesterol and they're called statins and I went around to the doctor's offices and I would bring them samples of this medication and we would talk to the doctors about that, making sure that their patients were going in for liver function tests. It's just part of the routine that happens when you are taking a statin. And so they're checking your liver to make sure that everything's functioning correctly because the medication's going through your liver. Same with HIV testing, they're always checking that. That's really typical for people who are taking regular medication. There's liver function tests that are done because everything's running through your liver. So no difference for people taking medication for hypertension, high blood pressure, or hyperlipidemia, which is um, high cholesterol. So, you know, things are checked because these are medications that are running through our systems. So 
In regards to side effects, when I was a sales rep, we would go into these doctor's offices, we were bringing them samples of the medication, and we'd always ask them, how are your patients doing on these medications? Um, any adverse side effects that you can report? If there was ever an adverse side effect from a patient, it had to be reported. We actually had a form that we had to fill out. This is um, pre-true internet days, but we had like a form that we had to fill out. And it was very important that the drug company was aware of any side effect, even if only one person out of, let's say, a million that was taking this drug had that side effect, that side effect would be put in the product information. So when you get your medication, there's typically a little piece of like folded up paper like a hundred times that's like stuck to the side of it. If you open that up, that's the product information. You can find everything you need to know about this medication on that paperwork. The, the type is super small, um, but it will, it will include every single type of adverse side effect. So even if one person has it, it has to be listed there. And people think sometimes if they see a side effect that it caused you know, something really horrific, they think, oh, that's probably really typical, but it's not necessarily true. So the typical side effects, and it will say, rare side effects and it will list more common side effects. So for Trimec, the common side effects are general ill feeling, extreme tiredness, body aches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, rash, fever. For hypertension medication, some of the common side effects are nausea, vomiting, headache, feeling tired, weak, drowsy, lack of energy, feeling nervous, erection problems, dizziness, lightheadedness, diarrhea, or constipation and cough. So a lot of similar side effects. With um, HIV medication, you'll have some side effects in the beginning that seem a little bit maybe unbearable that didn't happen with me with this one, but I do know that people go through this where they have like uh, the few, first like maybe week, things will be more intense and then as your body adjusts, they calm down. So like if there's like nausea or vomiting, like those things will mellow out. If for some reason you have a rash, that's typically an allergic reaction to medication and if it continues, doctors will change your medication. So with HIV medication, there is so many different options out there. And like I said, with, my, with everybody with HIV, we typically take three drugs. So mine has three drugs in one in this pill. There's actually three different drugs in this one pill. And um, I take a Bacavir, Dilutegravir, and lamivudine. So those are the names of the drugs. All together, this pill is called Triumec. These drugs, like Abacavir, is found in other three-in-ones, or Dilutegravir. Dilutegravir is actually Tivacae, and some people take Tivacae. That's the brand name. Tivacae is the brand name. So these medications can cause side effects. If they are like affecting your life in a way that you can't function, then your doctor would change you to something else. Nobody is supposed to be living with side effects that are like making it impossible to go to work or just go to the store. So those things should not be happening. And you know, before you're prescribed these medications, we do something called um, phenotyping and genotyping. They figure out through the phenotyping and genotyping in your blood what the best fit of medication is for you. And it will say next to each kind, it'll say um, whether you were resistant to it or sensitive to it. If you're sensitive to it, I know that sounds weird, it kind of doesn't make sense, but that means that it would work for you. If you're resistant to it, it um, is not one that they're gonna prescribe for you. So they go through this process of checking your blood and seeing which ones would work. Just, it's amazing. Like they go through and they, it's sent to the lab and the lab tests your blood with each kind of medication and it will say which one will work best. So that's typically where they go with that and then they're able to prescribe from there. So my side effects for this are, I take it at five o'clock at night. Sometimes I will have, I would say maybe, I don't even know two times out of the week, maybe three times out of the week. An hour after I take this, I will have um, a little queasiness. And it's a kind of, I always explain it, it's kind of like a queasiness where, and it's like one hour later, I can take this with or without food also. I have no restrictions with this medication. I can drink a glass of wine with it if I want. Um, there's no, but this is my medication. I'm just telling you what I take. So about an hour after I take it, sometimes I feel a little queasy. It's the kind of queasy where you're almost wondering if there's something you ate and oh God, am I gonna be sick in another hour? And then honestly, within three minutes maybe, it vanishes, it's gone. And I, and I don't feel anything after that. So um, I don't have anything beyond that. Sometimes a smidge of a headache, but I feel like that hasn't happened in a long time. 
Um, the only other thing I can think of is for a while and then sometimes still every once in a while, I'll wake up around three in the morning and be my, instead of my brain being kind of groggy, it's, it's wanting to be a little bit awake when I feel like I just want to sleep but my brain feels a little bit awake and then I start thinking and then I eventually just go back to sleep. It doesn't ever make me get up and you know walk around the house or whatever. I mean, it's not like full-blown insomnia or something, but sometimes that does happen. So on my Instagram story, I decided to ask people if they would chime in anonymously and tell me what their medication was and what side effects they have. And so this is what people shared with me. Um, I have two people that wrote in about Genvoya and one said that they take Genvoya and there's no side effect. They said they've been on it for um, the past nine years, no side effects. Another person said with, it, with Genvoya that they feel dizziness, but it usually goes away within the first hour. Yeah, a lot of stuff kind of within the first hour. Um, Atripla, I'm familiar with Atripla because I took this for the first four days after I was diagnosed and I was really sick at the time and I knew my um, doctor or nurse told me that that this actually this medication is sometimes sold on the street because it makes people feel a little high um, like if they were smoking pot and people like that feeling but at the time I was really sick and I <laughs> that was the last thing I wanted to feel was a little high but yeah I definitely felt that when I took a tripla thankfully I only took it for four days it's kind of an older medication it's still um, more available in, you know, not like in the US, but maybe like in Africa or other countries that don't have access to some of their newer medications. But Atripla, um, somebody reported that they had a little rash on their hands that lasted about three days and they used to feel like they were high. That's, that is because of the ingredient um, Efrens. I hope I'm saying that right. And that medication apparently is the one that makes people feel a little bit, you know, woo. Um, Descovy, I feel like I'm saying that wrong, and Tivike, so Tivike is Dilutegravir, that's one medication that's in my medication. Descovy, um, they put those two together because I had two people write to me about that combination. They say they have no side effects. Uh, Bictarvi, again, these names, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing them, I just, I see them spelled out a lot, but I don't say them out loud. This person said that they have no side effects. Um, Jaluka. I had to look this one up. I had never heard of this one before. So this person says that they have a rash on their chin more times than not. I actually spoke to this person and they are gonna be uh, meeting with their doctor soon because this side effect hasn't been going away. And typically that's an allergic reaction when they're having a rash. So I, I have a feeling that this person will be changed from their medication. Um, they said that they had an appointment soon with their doctor and they were gonna talk about it. Um, this person says I take three Combavir, Combavir, Tivike, and so they take three. There's one of each, Combavir, Tivike, and Resolsta. And they said, I, I get some nausea and fast heartbeat for an hour, like increased heart rate for about an hour. Um, I don't know how to say this one. Elevir, Eltvir? I'm not sure. It's Efferens, Lamivudine, and Tenov, Tenov, <laughs> Oh my God, these are so hard to say. Tenofovir, um, side effects, dizziness, diarrhea, acidic. So that's another one I'm not really totally sure of. I'm not sure if that's in the US or not, or it's as common in the US, might not be. Um, so those are some of the general side effects. Like I said, with medications for hypertension and diabetes, of course with cancer, uh, there's lots of side effects. That's medication for you. There's side effects for sure. And, um, but in general, this is not affecting me at all. Like I'm, you know, I'm super thankful that I have it. It's keeping me undetectable. Undetectable equals untransmittable. I'm not transmitting this virus. Anybody who's undetectable is not gonna transmit HIV. You know, this stuff is keeping me alive. It's keeping the virus dormant. And um, I, I'm kind of like so stoked about my medication. I'm so lucky this happened to me when it did. In um, the early 90s and 80s, this wasn't available. This medication is what is saving people's lives today. Um, you know, in 2016, I believe the year was, there was roughly 6,000 to 7,000 deaths due to HIV and AIDS. Um, you know, and a lot of that has to do with the social determinants of life and a lot of people, um, and I know that's a whole nother topic, but it's not because they were taking medication and they died of AIDS. That's not what it is. It's for people that literally feel so 
upset about the fact that they have HIV, that they're not going to the doctor to even get the medication. It's people that um, live um, a homeless lifestyle and they have, like, their top priority is getting food or finding shelter, not taking HIV medication. Um, there's people that have, you know, mental illness that have HIV and their top priority is not taking medication. There's people that have um, drug and substance abuse problems that they're not taking their medication. So it's not because people are taking medication and dying from HIV and AIDS today. It's because of other things that prevent them from taking their medication. That's about it. I just really wanted to do this video on my side effects and I'm not in any way afraid of this medication at all. I'm super thankful for it. It's keeping me alive. It's keeping this virus totally suppressed. I feel 100% normal. I don't feel sick. Um, you know, that little queasy thing that I get after an hour, honestly, it's really weird, but it's kind of comforting because it lets me know that it's there and it's working. So I hope this was helpful for you. Anybody who's afraid to test, don't be afraid of this medication. If you end up being positive for HIV, remember that this condition is a very manageable condition today. The medication's out there, it's available, and um, you just need to go to the proper resources to get it. That's through a doctor, through a clinic, and there's lots of programs out there to help people. Wherever you go for testing, they're gonna help you with the next steps as far as how to get medication. So that's it for now. If you guys have any questions in regards to my medication, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm not paid by Vive Pharmaceuticals to do this. I do this because I just want people to understand what I'm living with and how manageable it is today. I just want people to test. I want people to know whether they have HIV so we can you know, do everything that we can to stop the spread of this virus. The virus is still continuing to affect you know, almost two million new people every year. Anything that we can do to try to reduce that number, it's worth doing. And so that's why I do these videos, hoping that, you know, people will become more educated and will, um, you know, go test and hopefully the numbers will start somehow coming down. I know I'm just a little piece of the pie, but I'm just doing my part. So, okay guys, have a great um, week and thanks for joining me for my Monday vlog today and um, be well.